On this episode of That Kingsville Podcast, bees! Bees everywhere! Kingsville's a bee city. And Steve... We love them. Yeah. Bring them all. Bring all the bees here. Uh, no mo may, whatever. <laughs> we talk uh, about uh, anniversaries of a few significant occurrences on today. Uh, we talk a little bit about uh, the municipal election and the federal elections. Provincial. <laughs> well, I guess, federal, I guess federal, briefly pr- federal. Briefly federal, provincial. I'm just tongue-tied. I'm sorry. I, it's, 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 we talk about a lot of stuff We're today. Dipping into the honey. Yeah. <laughs> Join us for this episode of That King's Old Podcast. That King's Old Podcast is brought to you by King's Old Brewery. There's still time to order their Father's Day beer and barbecue packages. Order by this Sunday to receive free delivery within Essex County. All packages are enclosed in a box, decorated as a gift with beer cases stacked below. All quality meats are supplied by uh, their friends at the Butcher of Kingsville. Order on the website by clicking on Order Food button on the bottom of the right-hand corner of the page. I also want to remind you that they still have their Tank 2 IPA on sale from their online brew store for just $55 when the code TANK is applied at checkout. So it's only available while, while supplies last. Thank you, Kingsville Brewery, for supporting that Kingsville podcast. Welcome to this episode of That Kingsville Podcast. I'm your host, Dave Hunt. With me, Kevin Black. My coffee is blisteringly well, hot. Fantastic. Oh my gosh, I just Wake burned up. my mouth. Hey, it's the morning zoo. Wake up. We got Kevin Black and Steve oh. Higgins in here of That Kingsville Podcast. Are you oh, okay? No, I, I think I just burned. Do you, do, we, do you need CPR? I'm not doing it. <laughs> Trust me. Do we? I think I'll make it. Gary, Gary, do you have a first aid kit where you can put a little ointment on his tongue? Yeah. No. Some salve. Do you have any salve? <laughs> I don't even know what salve is. <laughs> salve. <laughs> sorry, oh. and Steve. Oh, sorry, yeah, Steve. no, hey. Ah. Yeah, well, the morning zoo. My water's great. Oh, exactly. It's refreshing. Refreshing. We don't need coffee at 7 o'clock at night to, to do this. <laughs> Straight from the union. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, you had a, an interesting weekend. It was an interesting weekend. Kevin, you went somewhere. Where did you so go? So went to the the big smoke, the the T dot, <sighs> the six, the as s- they like to call it now. Apparently, from the six. Yeah. And what what do we do there? Uh, so uh, we went up, and uh, it's I'll, I'll tell the story. Uh, but my kids uh ended up being able to play catch on the field of uh of roger center right after the blue jays game not just running the bases they got not just running the catch. bases like they hung out for 20 minutes on the field and just played catch how much did that cost you uh not a dime so uh funny story because i used to cover a lot of sports i'm still on some uh media and pr lists and uh oh. and so uh i'm i'm on the jays one and the jays had sent out a thing earlier in the year about joining the kids can join like their their jays club yeah, junior jays junior jays and uh and so sign them up and uh and and then uh a week ago be a week ago oh that was me hold rudely interrupting the podcast uh, yet again thank you kevin technology and a week ago uh got an email from through that same email blast saying if your uh children are junior jays then uh if you send us an email at this specific time then you'll be entered they'll be entered into a draw for a chance to play catch on the field are you kidding me so uh so of course because i am intense i like wrote the email and scheduled it in my outbox so that it went at the exact, like exactly at 9 a.m. Mm-hmm. And they ended up getting chosen. Wow. So it, and we had no plans to to go like up to Toronto at that point where I was just put their names in because that'd be kind of cool. Yeah. So Mia played her first baseball, like softball game ever on Saturday morning. Were you, was this intentional? Like, we won. We, we got to figure out what you, if you can identify baseball. Right. So, so then she did. She got a walk. So that was good. A couple strikeouts, but that's all right. And, uh, so then played, played her first game ever. And, uh, and then like we jump in the car, drive to Toronto, uh, took them to the aquarium, slept and went to the Jays game the next day. And the Jays played the Twins. And the Jays played the Twins. And mo- uh, moited, it was a rough one. Moited them? Yeah. No, no, no. Horribly? No, they got, 
in like three runs. The Twins scored three in the first. It was it was a rough game. Oh, the Jays did come back in the ninth, but we didn't get to see it because we were in the concourse lining up to be able to go and run yeah. the bases and uh, and then go play catch. Yeah. So um, because that's not lucky enough, we're walking down the concourse heading out there. And uh, and while we're walking, um, like uh, a young guy in a Jay's like red golf shirt. Mm-hmm. So he's I'm it, he looked like he had like the lanyard. I'm thinking ground screw. OK, um, because that was the same uh, uh, like golf shirts that the ground screw was wearing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he walks up and he's like, hey, little guy, you want a ball? And uh, and he's like, and yeah. you said yes. <laughs> I'm like, I was yes, he does. <laughs> He'll take all of the balls. Yes, and uh, and handed him one, and uh, and 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 it turned out to be one that was from the field. Like it was played. Oh, it was a geez. game ball. Like it was scuffed up and dirty. Oh. So then we go. We get in line. Lineup was wild, but that, hey, that, if there's anything in life worth while lining mm-hmm. up for, that's that's up there. Mm-hmm. So then they go. They run the bases, uh, and then uh, we get pulled aside after they run the bases. You're and now starting shortstop for the Toronto Blue Jays. Right, <laughs> right. Like, so they're we like, like the cut of your gym, fella. Yeah, and and I looked at them and I'm like, you know what? I can shag some flies. Uh, let's go, let's go, and then I'll catch four and have a heart attack, and you know, catch then one you'll, in the teeth. Right. Yeah. Trip. Roll. So wait. Turf burn. All right. Run the bases. So run the bases. Uh, get pulled aside. Gets go on the field and like literally just hanging out in you know center right. Just tossing some balls around, just shagging some flies, and so it, which is was super cool, and uh, and the my, the best moment, Sebastian threw one to Mia, and like Sebastian's he's working on it, sure, yeah, 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 and it was a short hopper, and Mia turns around and and like snags it backhand clean. <laughs> Like, oh my gosh. Sign her. Like, that was a good one. Sign her up. It was amazing. It was yeah. absolutely amazing. You know, yeah. I've I've been a Jays fan. Like, like I grew up up there. I, they're my team. My yeah. my grandma introduced them to me in the 80s. Like, is, is she still the woman that sits behind home plate and is fearless? <laughs> we've we've heard about this woman. No. Right? Yes. She's no. everyone's grandma as far as I'm concerned. Hey. For the listeners that don't know, there's a woman yes. that sits right directly behind home plate at Rogers Center. And frequently gets foul balls hit off right at her head into the fence, and she does not flinch. <laughs> Could you imagine how many it's ha- how many times it's happened though? We each, well, yeah, it's just, just, just it, like it's nothing. It, invincible. It was it it was an it was a surreal moment to be there on the field. Like mm-hmm. it's it's just looking around. It's the stadium that I grew up with, mm-hmm. and uh, and having the opportunity to be there. It's one of those moments that you understand that. Like like sports is is something that is more than just the scores. It's more than player salaries. It's more than the trades, and, and all of that is fun. But when you get like to th- that moment, you start you. It gives you that perspective to understand why all of that stuff matters. Sure, you yeah. know, it it was it was it was unreal. You got any like life changing experiences vicariously through your kids? <laughs> I got oh, I got one. I'm gonna I I don't wanna like like oh yeah, well I did this. So like um, I tossed the I tossed oh, the geez. baton to you. No, I gotta I gotta have a thing. I I probably do, but I wasn't expecting to be put on the spot. So. Right. so I I am also a Jays fan. And when they were in the twenty fourteen playoffs, I took a client to the bat flip game and I was oh. in second row, third base, pretty much right where, you know, all the action was happening. Yeah. And yeah, so that was my like I'm here in this moment in history. However, with my kids, the first time we ever took Danielle, our oldest, to Comerica to go watch a Tigers game, we're walking through the concourse and there's this win a bike uh, table set out in the concourse, and we're like, "Oh, we'll sign up our daughter's name, fine." And we're gonna draw it in the fifth or sixth inning. So we're having a nice, you know, afternoon at the ballpark. Did the the Ferris wheel and the merry-go-round and blah blah blah. And we were just back in our seats maybe half an inning and up on the the big billboard and the winner of the bike is danielle hunt 
and they came to our section immediately as it was da da da. So she got to go, and my wife, because I had our other newborn child with me, and I said, you take Danielle down. She's like, no, you need to take Danielle down. I was like, no, no, no. Just go and do this. I will take all the photos and whatever have you. So she got to go out to the mound with paws. Oh, my gosh. That's and, so yeah. cool. So awesome. we, we keep going. I'm like, hey, Danielle, do you remember that time you were on the field at Comerica Park? She's like, no. I want a bike, though. <sighs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> anyway i'm glad that you know we've had those you've gotta had something steve you know Nothing. what uh, well get out I, more <laughs> go do things <laughs> do things you know that's and and obviously it's not just the jays and and i know the tigers do a lot of very similar things yeah. and and it's I think the pro sports teams are starting to understand that they have to offer these experiences now because it's one of the, they're charging a lot of money for tickets. Yeah. It's expensive to go to a game now if you're not going to sit, uh, you know, in the upper decks. And even then, it's still fairly expensive to take, you know, mm. uh, a wife and two kids. Sure. And uh, and well, so I think they understand that they they have the ability and access to provide these experiences the, to fans that will that are like you said life changing, mm -hmm. and um, and provide that much extra value to make you want to go forever back. a fan. Yeah, I mean my my kids aren't aren't big into sports, and we've taken them to a couple of games. We uh, actually my son and I went to. He's been to one NHL game. I was just going to say he's a Blues fan exactly. Yeah, and so I was like okay, and and he had been to a couple of Spitz games before, and by the end of the second period, he kind of lost interest. So first time at LCA and every time now, dad, when are the blues coming? And and so here he is, this just sort of fearless, he'd be what, eight or nine at the time. Mm -hmm. And every time the music's on, he's trying to get on, <laughs> on the <laughs> scoreboard. Yeah. So the music, he's just dancing away in his blues t-shirt. I'm thinking if they put him up there, they're just going to boo him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but no. he's going to try. And, and you know what? It was, it was a fantastic game in that. It, it ended up going to overtime. The Blues won, oh, so hey, in his glory, you know. You you know, know but but when you're when you're there and and like sporting the Blues and and they boo, that those are cheers. That's one of those things yeah. where like you you're you're playing that role, right? You're the no, foil. And, and he he sort of embraced it. Yeah, I mean, every time he saw someone else with a blue shirt on, he. Yeah, you know, like he was you're happy. the Brooklyn brawler. <laughs> <laughs> He's angry right now with the Colorado Avalanche. Oh, but, uh, oh. well, they knocked the Blues out. Yeah, right, so. yeah. Why is he a Blues fan? That's interesting. Well, okay, so he would go to the Kingsville Arena while his sister was on the ice skating, and they always had the little, you know, he had a little gumball thing or whatever Vending machine thing. Yeah, so they had this one, and they had these little little bodies with these rubber heads on and the bodies sported like a, a sports team logo. And he ended up, he wanted one to play with and he was just bouncing the ball around. He ended up getting two, the Florida Panthers one and the St. Louis Blues one. And for whatever reason, the Blues one stuck with him. Huh. So that's, that's how he became a Blues fan. Um, I mean, for us, it's, it's- He's dedicated too. It's yeah, not just like fly no, by night. No, he is. And he's not a big, yeah. big hockey watcher otherwise, but he's, it's how the Blues do? What are the Blues up to kind of thing? But I mean, our sports and like our teams, I mean, it's, it's basically geographical as yeah, to why yeah. we support them. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, when I, when I was growing up, I, I had two soccer teams. Well, I still do have two soccer teams. There, there's Middlesbrough, which is basically the, the nearest team to where I was born. And, and my dad would take me to those games a few times. And then I became a Manchester United fan by default because I remember my friend coming home one day and he had this really nice and i'll say it it was a liverpool jersey on <laughs> so i said to my mom i said can i go get one she's like sure so we get to the store and they didn't have one in my size and he's he's the, i remember the guy saying but we have this manchester united one <laughs> do you want a manchester united one sure so i became a manchester united fan simply by that via clothing selection exactly However, so i could have been a liverpool fan which mm -hmm. you know right now wouldn't be a bad thing but in a way, I kind of lucked out too. Hmm. The, yeah, yeah. the things I've seen happen so. to be a real good team. Wow. Well, interesting. Well, it's a, it's a, it's it's all in what you're able to glean from it, whether it be you know a personal experience or just the atmosphere. Or if you've only ever been to one, like it's it's supposed to be life changing kind of thing. And like you said, they're doing a lot more 
more family involvement to make sure that the experience is repetitive. So yeah, get out, take your kids out. Oh no. And we will. <laughs> no, we, <laughs> we actually went to a, my, um, my in-laws were visiting from California and we got tickets for San Francisco giants. They were living in San Francisco at uh, the time, um, a giants tigers game. So there was, I think 10 of us at the tigers game that day. So, you know, and the tigers we, lost, I guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> pretty sure they did actually. Yeah. Right? Of course. So. Well, it's uh we got an a couple of anniversaries today, a day of recording, whatever it was this the sixth of June. The sixth of June. It was uh the anniversary of the Battle of Normandy. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's significant for a lot of people, a lot of families still. Those generations are dwindling and you know, we still remember what happened, at least Canadians do, and I'm sure. Well, yeah, it seems other, to be something that um, the, that the French remember very well as, as well. well. Yeah. yeah, and we'd be remiss. I mean, we should have, in a way, been ahead of this one. But uh, you know, the first Sunday in June every year, I know the, the the Legion holds a memorial Sunday service. Yeah, they do. Um, you know, which I would assume was yesterday, and yeah. unfortunately, it slipped my mind. But uh, you know, once again, you know, we're all indebted to the many veterans of many conflicts and yeah, we thank absolutely. them for that mm -hmm. yeah also also shared anniversary of something a little more local um the uh, leamington tornado yeah june 6 2010 2010 12 years on it's crazy it's 12 years ago yeah i remember that night yeah. i remember waking up in the middle of the night and hearing something loud and you know just like ah and I, <laughs> wake up in the morning and devastation it's widespread devastation harrow yeah. To Leamington. I remember uh, my my wife and uh, my daughter was one at the time, and they had they'd gone to the Flamingo oh. for breakfast <laughs> with with her parents. And what were well, it wasn't well, operating. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah maybe she came didn't. home, yeah. and actually, I remember her coming home and saying, "It looks like a tornado went through." And we were living in Leamington at the time, but we were uh, you know a little bit further north of where the action hmm. was. So you know, we knew there was a storm. We didn't realize how catastrophic the storm was if you will I, and I, catastrophic i don't want to you know thankfully there was you know no, no serious injuries yeah, no but, casualties you know i think property wise for some it was well, there catastrophic. Are, there was hundreds of millions of dollars in damage right yeah it was what was it yoder greenhouse yeah yoder got wiped yes. out completely wiped out and yeah there was a i just remember that the glass yeah, yeah. um yeah. You yeah. know, that field was just covered. I'm sure it still is. My my in-laws lost a whole bunch of uh, blueberry netting across the back of the field because the tornado started in Harrow. Yep. Yep. And that went straight head due east, I bet, uh, basically through all the farmer's fields. No, it was it, actually three different tornadoes. Oh, was it now? Yeah. And they, because that was the original thought, okay. was that it was one. And then Environment Canada came out. I want to say it was about two months later after they studied the the damage in the and the pass and the wind of the day, and decided it was three separate tornadoes that made landfall, and they all skipped along the shoreline. Mm -hmm. So like they would come in and dissipate, and come in and dissipate. And the original idea was that it was a uh, F zero. Mm -hmm. I think it finally ended up being classified as an F2, which is, it's up there. It's, yeah, it's if for Canadian tornadoes, that's, well, I mean. It's uh, like, like for Canadian anything, it's like for Canadian music, that's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're counting like Tornado CanCon, that's like as good as it gets, right? Like We're not that's, talking Oklahoma tornadoes no, where they're right. miles. No, yeah. no, and and But yeah, we don't have that same no. sort of. No. You know, uh, set, uh, humidity and 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 uh, and pressure system setups here, but the way that that, that tornado came in um, made it it would have made it difficult, regardless, to be able to get warnings out just because of how fast it moved. Um, but at, at the time, uh, tornadoes were only being um, uh, uh, warned. Uh, thirty three percent of the time, oh, like Environment really? Canada was only able to get warnings out for them. Oh hey, the, I yeah. think there's a tornado there, eh? And that was one that they didn't. <laughs> they since <laughs> the Leamington one, and it was kind of the one that that brought that issue to focus because, and and I'll talk I'll talk about my experience with it in a second. But because there were. It was a, there was a couple of close calls for some serious injuries, um, uh, if not fatalities, and um, 
And luckily that didn't happen. Um, but they understood that the, the warning system was broken. Mm, very. And, and so they made a lot of changes at Environment Canada after that. Well, they took down all the air raid sirens in town back in the mid aughts, yeah. right? Like that one that was a station outside of Kingsville Public School that I used to love every time that they'd fire it up when we were in. But no one would have set it off because there's no warning. Yeah. Like that, that was the issue because that immediately after the tornado what was people came out with that that concern that oh well they why didn't they fire the air raid sirens and there was a lot of politicians saying the same thing at the time but that environment canada realized that even if they had it even if they had the warning system amherstburg still has it because of fermi yeah and so yeah. even if they had it no one was setting it off because there was no warnings in place yeah. and now the now i think the last numbers I saw was around between 70 and 75% of tornadoes get a, a proper warning. Um, that's still not enough, but it is obviously better. We were at a buck and doe that night. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't occur, right? No. Like, I actually, you know, there's probably a big portion of people that have no idea what that is. Or, well, I mean, it's also an air raid siren. Yeah, that's what I mean. Um, kind of fits in with both anniversaries. Yeah. Um, There's your tie-in. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, we were at uh, we were at a buck and doe and uh, at the Kingsville Arena, and it poured like it was torrential rain. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I remember saying to Kath that it just the it felt different because the rain came, and. Normally, when you get torrential rains like that, it it takes a lot of the energy out of the atmosphere, so the humidity will go down almost instantly. The obviously temperature goes down, and those are the two things that that power up tornadoes. Mm -hmm. But it didn't. And and if anything, when we were going home that night, uh, we were living at the at Liam Marie's at the farm at the time, and uh, and you could feel the humidity was like climbing still. So I said to Kath, like, hey, like we should turn on the news because I've got a feeling that there's something something's brewing. coming something and, brewing. and so they showed uh, like the, they showed the storms, they showed the red, they showed some of the hooks that were happening on, on the edge of the storm that was coming and then it fell asleep because I was at a bucket <laughs> door and had been drinking <laughs> no. and, uh, and, and woke up at, I want to say 6 AM probably quarter to six uh, to a call from then fire chief of Leamington, mm -hmm. uh, or was he deputy chief? Deputy chief at the time, Chuck Parsons, and uh, and Chuck was saying, "Look, it, uh, we got smashed by tornadoes. Uh, it's an absolute yeah. oh, disaster. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you probably need to come out and um, and start reporting to get traffic out of here." I'm like, "Okay." So uh, so go outside and at where we were at Leah Maria's we had um right by our sign we had just planted a bunch of basil plants mm -hmm. and they're like little black two gallon pots with like tiny little things in them five of them were knocked over <laughs> five <laughs> of like 70 yeah and I look I'm like well how bad was it yeah and and then Ooh, obviously man. as everyone remembers yep. that that was here then you dr start driving towards and once you got to albuna it was like there was just a wall of, of trees. destruction yeah, trees and destruction yeah and yeah. then yeah like yoder was was demolished that's further up sea cliff and yeah i remember uh after tam coming home saying so we drove down and obviously there was no access on the sea cliff yeah. and i don't know what route i took but i i know cedar island got hit there was some damage out that way yeah, not was, significant right. that's right yeah. And then um, I remember speaking to a gentleman who lived on St. Luke. So we're, you know, the neighborhood just before, if you're heading towards Leamington, just before um, Albuta Town Line, yep. for those who don't know where St. Luke is, right on the lake too. And uh, I, I remember asking him, what was it like? And and he was ra raking up some branches. Damage, thankfully, there was was minimal. But he said it sounded like a freight train coming through. The, 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 the vibrations, the noise and everything. But the... I mean, obviously, the landscape was was completely changed, completely and changed. I, I still there's still a couple of spots along that road, and I don't remember how it was, but it just it to this day it's obviously it's it's wide open, it's bare, yeah. But all those trees that line Seacliff from basically Albuna all the way into Leamington, even Seacliff Park, like think of all that foliage and all those trees that used to canopy mm -hmm. the, the that entire road, and it just was matchsticks. I went. 
maybe a couple of days after when the road was back reopened just to evaluate and it was like it just devastating but there know. there was one spot <clears throat> and it, these were there used to be two small cottages there um back off the road along the water almost right across the road from carl's produce State. yes yep. and there's a couple large homes going yes. up there now correct and uh you're... and the one home that was uh to the east uh family owned it it was their like second house it was like a uh I don't want to call it a cottage because it's a beautiful place. It was a house. Yeah. It was a house, but it was they they had decided to, to go there to be on the water for the night. And uh and their son um was and he was younger, was getting agitated, like really agitated. He didn't want to be there. He was crying. Uh, he was putting up a fuss, and they finally decided, you know what? We're gonna leave, we're gonna go back. You know, it's he's not gonna sleep tonight. And they went back to their house. And uh, a tree came down and completely obliterated his bedroom. Like his, I have photos of his bed snapped in half with a giant oak tree right through the center of it. That sent shivers down me. Like it's, it was. People forget it was devastating. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, look at, at the, the neighborhood that's just adjacent to the the field where Yoder's was. So what's, what's that, the, is that Kenneth and yeah, or Lothrop? Yeah. Or? But that was the subdivision that had the most amount of damage. Yes, yeah, so remember roofs. Yeah, yeah, roofs being, and structure being removed. Yeah. Uh, my wife used to have a coworker, and her roof lifted off of her house, and yeah. like they had PTSD for a while because of that significance, right? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it, it being in uh, Seacliff Park and then it kind of just fizzled out after it hit the park. The golf course got it really bad. And that was the oh, third right. one yes. that came that came back on land and it, 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 it mostly went through farm fields, but it hit the golf course. Yeah. And, and your shores? And, yeah, your yeah. shores. It tore out a bunch of trees there, yeah. um, damaged the rough quite a bit. And then it went through the field off to the side, which is now owned by the Caldwells. Yes. Went through that bush a little bit and then dissipated at the, after that. Well, it changed <clears throat> Leamington forever, right? And it is it hasn't been the same city since. But here's the interesting thing. So at that time, Leamington was faced with some significant um, redevelopment that they were looking to do. There were five major projects. One of them was... Uh, sewer lines in uh, along Robson Road. Mm -hmm. Another one was a redevelopment of the um, marina, including some new docking that was going to cost millions, as well as some uh, shoreline repair. Mm -hmm. A major one was the redevelopment of Seacliff Park. <laughs> <laughs> like, like they That's convenient, right? And but all of, there was five projects that was basically laid out, and council had had like a strategic planning session. I want to say two or three months prior and uh and had laid out these projects as like a 10-year window wow. of of work that they wanted to do and then the tornado happened and you could almost go down the list and check off each project as it followed where there was damage by the tornado like seacliff park was able to get rebuilt the docks were destroyed at the yeah. marina that was <laughs> one they wanted to rebuild um there was significant uh impact to some of the stormwater management systems down along uh robson and then closer uh where it meets up with um sturgeon creek mm -hmm. so there you could argue that it was almost a windfall for the <laughs> municipality from a tax base <laughs> because <laughs> It's a hard a way wind to windfall. Wow. Oh. Well, think like, about it. Windfall or like, come on. Windfall. Yeah. You like that? Ew. Ew. I like how subtle you were in delivery. Because I'm like looking at Dave and I'm like, do I call him? <laughs> Blowing all over everyone's head. Uh, but it was, uh, it, it's interesting now because a lot of the, the amenities that the town points to as Seacliff Park is a jewel. Mm -hmm. The marina is a jewel. The waterfront work that they're planning to do, um, some of that major development that they're doing is because of that sewer expansion that they were able to get along Robson. Yeah. You could you could say, you could make the argument that a lot of the best parts of Leamington were thanks to June 6, 2010. <laughs> Uh, you know what? And I, I think you're right. I think you honestly are right. Because if it had to be generated through taxpayer dollars, that would have not happened at the same frequency or pace. They would just be finishing, really. Right. They would, well, yeah. Not, maybe, no. maybe a couple of them. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and they wouldn't have done it to the same 
extent. Like no. you, you, you guys have been along, uh, been around as long as I have. Like you know that the the plans of municipalities and that uh, that politicians put out as being the plan generally end up being <laughs> about two thirds of what yeah. what they're going to actually do. Should, right. Should as be. soon as the, the, the dollar signs start coming in, it's like, oh, we can't afford this major amphitheater. Instead, we're going to pour uh, a, a sidewalk and, and call it a band's show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, it's, it's the way politics goes. Budgetary allotment, mm-hmm. and, you know, and overruns. Such. Well, and and it's, mistakes it's a as they were <laughs> mis- near steps, water, even missteps, miscues. Yeah, yeah. but it, yeah, interesting. Inter- that, that that was twelve years ago. And, twelve years ago, it, yeah. it, it reshaped this end of uh, of Essex County. Mm-hmm. It really did. Mm-hmm. Well, segueing to Kingsville news, Kingsville news, Mayor's Golf Tournament, July twenty eighth. Again, uh, last year they raised a little over ten thousand dollars, and that's. Going towards all the movies in the park that they're Ooh, having this that's year. That's exciting. And just, uh, I, and just, I, was, I was just gonna say, I love knowing what a golf tournament is for. Oh, <laughs> and just a note, so, um, so good. He's so good. Bit of a PSA, uh, just so people know, they may need to check the town of Kingsville's website. Um, some of the timing of the movies might be changing because they discovered that. Um, playing a movie when it's still daylight out isn't the best way to try and do it. Um, <laughs> Did they really? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, eight thirty. It's I, like it's still, still daylight. Still daylight. Yeah. Um, so uh, they weren't showing the Dark Knight. You know oh. what? No. Oh. Oh, man, that was good. You know, Kingsville, the town where we show movies during the day and parades at night. Like, <laughs> whoa, whoa. That's that's what you call a comeback. Or callback in the uh, in the terms of uh, radio and whatnot, or comedy <laughs> as a callback to a few episodes ago. So yeah, uh, if uh, you are either interested in sponsorship of uh, the event, or they've got many levels of sponsorship and or participation, uh, Kingsville.ca/golf uh, for all your information there. Again, July twenty eighth, I believe it's a Thursday. So if you're interested. Get your uh, information in there. I uh, I can't yeah. imagine there'd be any campaigning happening there. None campaigning. No, it, no. It's on Kingsville Golf and Country Club, so that's not a municipally owned venue in order to uh, campaign. Who's disrupting things now, Dave? My doorbell just- camera because of the wind. I'm sorry. <laughs> Highland Games coming up uh, end of the month, uh, but the tug of war that they had last year, they're also having a tug of war this year again. Uh, looking for teams to participate, please register by June 17th with your team. You can find all that information again, kingsville.ca and then Highland Games, yada, yada. And Jasperson. Jasperson got some benches, Steve. They're very nice benches. Great benches. They're very close in proximity to each other, too. So, you know, you can take a quarter kilometer break between benches. Oh, that's exciting. Ooh. Hey, I wonder if that means less people lean on my fence. Oh, there was a guy this morning. I walked. I was by about 545 this morning. And he was just kicking it, you know, you know like stretching out his calves or whatever. Yeah. On your fence? Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> that's, that's the stretching zone. Yeah. <laughs> it's, Apparently. It's, I turn before I get to the stretching zone. So. You, you know what isn't on Jasperson? So here. Yeah. Go ahead. No. I, no, no, we no, no. We both no, share no, in this one. Right. But so my lovely wife raised an interesting point and then we discussed and we realized, yes, but this would be a better place. So who wants a garbage receptacle in their backyard practically? Uh, nobody. No. Right. So I'll <clears throat> give the town the benefit of the doubt for not putting them where the benches are. However, there's a nice couple of poles where the crosswalk, crosswalk. is yeah. just put one there yeah. please yeah. put a garbage receptacle yeah. there town of kingsville please yeah I, I don't i don't know how many times i've been up and down that stretch walking the dog and seeing people just leave their refuse baggies and whatnot right but it's it's more than that and i, I have a feeling they're going to be in once the school goes up because you're going to have yeah hundreds of kids back and forth to restaurants yeah, they're going to need like look at them now you you go by the high school sometimes yeah, there's one east and, and west of the high school right they're now. overflowing so credit to everyone for pu- using it first of all but you know who's to say you're you know someone goes to subway and you know they're walking to the arena for to watch their kids or somebody play baseball and they want somewhere to put their wrapper they already throw it on my lawn yeah they're throwing on my lawn constantly my my i could clean garbage off of my lawn 
Imagine every if other there day. was a garbage receptacle constantly right by the Zares parking lot. That's there's a. Sp- uh-huh. <laughs> That's out of the way. There's the park. There's Applewood Park there. There's a trash yeah. receptacle there, and then there isn't another one in that entire stretch. That's the closest Where would garbage. Be the, like the only one in the whole subdivision. In front of Zares, there's one. So yeah, on, but that's not municipal. On Main Street, there is one at, at most parks because the park off Pine Tree has one. Oh, does it? Oh, yeah. I guess it does. Yeah, You're right. Does, okay. Yeah. Okay. I should know. I should know. Wow. Um, Kingsville's also got a unique designation recently, uh, because of our efforts to protect pollinators. The town of Kingsville has been honored as a bee city. Can I go first and then not you let you go first? Yourself, okay. Okay. I'm sure no, we all no, got no, no, I, this. See, was your issue first. No, it's not even an issue. So I, <laughs> no, I, it is. I, I this is an issue. I caught this story tonight and I, it was, it was kind of nice. I will say that. I, and it, it's a neat concept. And I, right. Because it, it, they, t- they discussed like some of the gardens. My only issue is if this is the reason why park grass wasn't cut. <laughs> <laughs> then I have an issue. Then no, that is a problem because it has to be right. Okay, so I let the dandelions grow for the bees. Mm. Let the grass go grow for the ticks, where a bunch of kids run around. I don't know. I'm. Sp- it's all speculation. Can we call it part. Tick City? Can we also be being designated a Tick City? We could, no, we could be no. Look, t- Tickville. I'm not. I'm just saying that. I like what's what's been put in place as far as gardens and, and people who have who've taken the opportunity and there's the new banners. I don't know if you guys have seen the banners up in town on the mm-hmm. vision. I just noticed them the other day. I was like, what do they say? Oh, they're just all a buzz. But, um, <laughs> oh! yo, come on, honey. Anyway, that's why you tune in. Oh, you're smoking today. Why you tune in? I just hope that's, that isn't the reason because it was, no, it was, <clears throat> I was discussing again with a neighbor about the state of the park, and he indicated to me that he was actually cutting the grass in part of the park so that his kids could play safely. And a member of council said, well, this might be part of, what is it, Nomo May, I think it's called, to protect pollinators. Yeah, okay. Don't well, mow certain areas. I, if there's areas I, that you really don't need to mow, fine. I'm gonna I'm parklands are not it. I'm gonna hopefully say it's because of our communities in bloom status of you know having had such a predominant uh, I guess you know, participation throughout town with all the flowers and you know pollinators and whatnot. But so if it was no mo May, that means that they would have had to have decided to put this in place obviously in April or the very beginning of May. I'm sure there was a community or a, a committee of the whole meeting that translated into was there? a... Here's my question. I How did they so. have a meeting or have any staff reports when they didn't have a parks director? Their parks director didn't start until the first of May. Oh, that's correct. Yeah. So if if this was part of... Yes, but of they had some, an interim. They they still had the position. So then the interim decided that that they're going to completely mess up all of the work schedules for all of the all of the park staff because but, uh, aren't... The, correct me if I'm wrong. Don't park staff cut the grass in in the parks? I was under that assumption. They always have in the past. You, so I hear them going by, and then yeah. five minutes later, right. I hear them yeah. mowing. So and and they do they do a great job when they're working and and cutting the grass. They what do. are they doing if they're not cutting grass? And then what? How does an how does a brand new parks director the first day on the job deal with a staff that's not doing their the main core of their work? All right, so I'm going to play devil's advocate, and I'm just going to throw out a couple of things here. I'm that just, I, I'm, <clears throat> it, it's the idea that they aren't cutting grass in parks seems ludicrous okay, to me. So this is all hearsay. Right. Because, you know, it, I was up at the arena one night watching. Sorry. And, and no, that's okay. uh, please, please continue. Once I, I just want to add, it is all hearsay. We did ask the parks, the new parks director to join us tonight. Unfortunately, she was unable a, because um, she had some other personal, engagements. Personal. Okay. Yeah. No, and that's hopefully we can speak with her in the oh, near yeah, future. We, we but, fully intend on it. Um, you know, there was one one thing I heard that um, there was a more broken and then another that they hadn't heard the the full complement of staff yet, the student staff. So then to that, I wonder, well, 
could you not contract out grass cutting just just for that short time find somebody to say hey look we're in a pickle here can you please come and just cut the grass in these however many parts or, or let people know okay and the other part of it was was if it's staffing then could you not if if or if a mower's down okay so people use it from like 8 a.m to 3 p.m or 4 p.m and then put your staff in on a flex schedule and say okay you know this isn't ideal but we need you to to work six to nine tonight or five to nine tonight because we have to get this grass cut yeah, they're because there it doesn't to, they're look there good for communities in blue. Well, and it doesn't look good for visiting sports teams right I, I can tell you they they cut half the grass at the applewood park and then left and came back the next day because they weren't able to get through it all in the span of time that they had allotted for it so along those lines um there's a small patch of grass at basically at the intersection of chestnut and walnut king right by kings of public school mm -hmm. yep same thing long but again and they okay so union employees i get it they 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 started a certain time okay so says the I one of us like, that's unionized okay <laughs> <laughs> right but i'm not and that's that's all i'm not picking on unions i'm not i'm not saying no. anything pro no. pro or negative with unions all i'm saying is when you're part of a union, the expectation is you start at this time and you finish at that time. Oh, absolutely. Right? And if the job's not done, I don't know how it works with, with some unions. Some may just say, okay, you know what? You, no, this is when you finish. Uh, so sorry. on those lines, yes. the similar right by Kingswood Public School, they had started pulling plants. And rather than maybe just doing like one little boulevard bed at a time, they seem to go after the certain plants in each boulevard bed. And it looked, it, it, again, I pick and choose which one. If we're want. a community in bloom mm -hmm. and we're trying to attract tourism, and these are the things I keep hearing about Kingsville, mm -hmm. why are we leaving things looking like this? Have one bed cleaned out, get it cleaned out, take out everything you need, make it look nice, and leave the others looking as junky as they were. Don't like. <clears throat> Just, do half the job I in want three all of the them yellow ones and right. leave mess all over the place yeah. and i just again i this is not a you mentioned the new parks right this is not a pick on anyone this is not a pick it's, exactly. it's simply observations yeah. from people who are living in town and and it's not just me it's not just us like other oh. people have said have you know engaged in discussions about this too and and messages get relayed back to us because they're like hey you've got a podcast can you talk about this like, yeah i mean if we did that would there we go through all kinds of things. You mean we've got more than nine listeners? Well, I'm not saying they listen. <laughs> I'm just saying they know we have a podcast. Yeah, There's a difference yeah, yeah. there. Yeah. That's true. That's true. But interesting to say the least. Yeah, we are a bee city. Grass cutting is optional, apparently, so but so is pest or uh, weed, noxious weed control. They're all about that. Oh, no, that's optional. Oh. Yeah. No, well, the town doesn't worry about noxious <laughs> weed control. So now they've set precedence that it doesn't matter. Not right? Am I wrong? <laughs> Point. Can we get a can we get Kevin, a lawyer on? Yeah. Uh, I, we I, got I, hey, we got legal representation. I, at the I town, feel huh? like I feel like that if I was was to be given something uh against the noxious weed bylaw, I would go to take them to small claims and and cite precedents that they didn't care for noxious weeds themselves. Maybe uh so not a priority. Interesting. Hey, we're a B city. We are a B city. Let it go. See, I took it as like B. Like, why can't we be an A plus city? Or <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like, why do we have to say Our B? B plus and then I found city. out it was insect B. Was insect. Like, oh. So does so I assume then, and and maybe they don't. The town doesn't use any form of of pest management control. Oh, I'm sure they do. However. No, they can't. That would kill bees. All of it. Most of it, all of the if bees. it's well, like, I mean, if you're using any of the stuff that kills broadly for or or um, uh, crabgrass, yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know all the details. I did hear that one of the things that you have to do as a bee city is is help promote being a bee city to other towns. What? <laughs> <laughs> so it's a pyramid scheme. Yeah, I was just gonna say it. So are so we? I, I think, I think you have to, So wait, no, they are go we to the queen bee? They go to Leamington and say, "Let's be friends." Oh, so are we at the top of the hive, and 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 we recruit we recruit four other cities, and then they recruit four other cities, 
And then we're all just swimming in honey. Yeah. Part of the bee cult. Sweet. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> Is it really? Oh. Was it really? What? That like one of the stipulations was you have to recruit other cities to become bee cities. Pollinate. I think that's what I heard. That is pollinate the uh, congratulations. The I was I was look I was doing dishes. Great, at the time. You, I'm gonna segue. You keep going. Great job, Kings. Uh, oh. So, uh, Cottom News. Cottom News. The Bank Social Pub's open in Cottom. Hmm. They got a bar now. That's great. Hey, uh, so <laughs> candidates, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't drink in Cottom. I don't know. It's tough to get home. I'm just going to say, but thankfully for the people in the village of Cottom, village of Cottom, village of Cottom, Hamlet, Hamlet? Hamlet? no, no, Ruthven's a Ruthven's Hamlet, a Hamlet. Yeah. village of Cottom, village, village of Cottom. Cottom. They now have a place to imbibe in alcoholic beverages and wander home. Oh, it sounds great. Fantastic for them. They got pizza now and beer. What else, what else do you need? Love both. A lot of development too. A lot of development. It's exciting. Hey, if only, you know, it could have happened uh, sooner, but hey, it's happening now. Cottom's so. really up and coming. <laughs> Here we go. And uh, gentlemen, no new candidates have uh, applied for council since we've last uh, convened. It's still the same candidates. I didn't think I didn't think Laura Lucia was on the list the last time we had a podcast. Oh, okay. Well, if that's the case, I apologize. I don't remember. I'm not remember. sure. I don't have a memory. I have early onset Alzheimer's, so oh. who knows? It's a uh, shame. Well, you okay? <laughs> I'm so busy with kid stuff anyway. I yeah. don't remember yeah. how to tie my own shoes. Well, so I guess in summary, uh, Tam- Tamara Stomp uh, for mayor. Yes. Deputy Mayor Gord Queen elect uh, and uh, Councillor Kim DeYoung. No, you can't. No, incumbent. Well, incumbent, sorry. Yeah, I apologize. Yeah, not See, again, I can't even. I think, right, elect it's would be incumbent. Yes. Be after. incumbent. Not, yes. Thank you. If he uh, wins. Not incumbent because she's running for a different position. Right. Yes. So, so Kim DeYoung, <clears throat> Councillor Kim DeYoung running yes. for Deputy Mayor. And then the councillors would be Councillor Larry Patterson, Councillor Thomas uh, Newfeld, and Councillor Laura Lucher, all seeking re election. I'm a little surprised and a little worried. I mean, I hope we, well, I don't think we have because no one listens, but <laughs> scared people away from, because I mean, we've, we've discussed openly, sure. uh, you know, the, the, you don't, the, you, the, the, no, the stuff that comes with it yeah, being hey, elected. And I, I think it's a good thing. I would rather have people going into it, understanding what they're getting themselves into. Exactly. Than right. thinking that it, that you're, it's like being on some nameless board that you like, that, it's not the same. Yeah. And that's, and that's valid. And I totally understand that. But here's the thing is. It's two months, two August, and a half months. August 19th, it closes. Okay, so two months plus two, two and a half months, let's yep. say, give or take, till the deadline. Yep. And if you're not an incumbent and you're not someone who has maybe a long standing history in Kingsville, but you're someone who really cares and really wants to be involved and is really wanting to be out there, why have you not? put your name on the list yet just to get it out there maybe because of the federal or the provincial i should say maybe okay. that, that was a bit of a conflict you know didn't know how to differentiate between the two listen yeah, people I can see are that. stupid okay no people i are can't stu- say that well yeah, people are stupid well some people are but yeah, right, right but you know in order for them to differentiate the difference between running provincially and running municipally most wait a minute i i okay i would yeah, even but, but there's you're not allowed to put signs out I understand. for the municipal Right. Look, all and all I'm saying is that in and I was talking to to a friend yesterday about kind of the election and we were looking back on a few years ago. So like in 2014 you had 23 people running for five seats of council and he had said why why were there so many? I said because there were so many openings. Mm-hmm. Um due to various reasons, I think there were three yeah, empty seats up yeah. for grabs on council right. that year. There were only two incumbents running right. for, for council seats because um, that was the year um, Gord Queen chose to run for deputy for the first time after being a council member. Yep. And anyway, yeah. Um, so, you know, we're not ex- necessarily expecting 23 names running for five council seats again, but I am very surprised that, that there aren't anyone, there, there, aren't any, there isn't anyone new at this point. And the only thing I... That I would add is that I do think that the provincial election would have gobbled up the time of a lot of politically engaged people in the town. 
not just people that running, but people that might be helping out on campaigns or, you know, wh- whatever. I could see some of those people now having the the time to be able to say, okay, you know what? I helped out on this provincial campaign. Now that it's over, I can concentrate on the campaign I want to run for for municipal. Um I'm I'm not surprised. I think a lot of people I I would be shocked if we're at the end of June and and don't have a full slate of candidates. I think that's the point where, you know, maybe after the July long weekend, like that first week of July, mm-hmm. um that's when I think over the the last couple weeks of June where we're going to see a lot of names come in. And and that may be the case, but I look at it's july and say you know july is a real flux month in that so many like people are gone a lot a lot of people are gone and and if i want my name on that list i want it out there in june you know i want when i don't know if it matters anymore like a lot of the work that you could a lot of the work you're doing before that august 19th day and especially the last six weeks or so when the signs go out is building your team and you don't need to put your name forward to be working on putting your team together, and and then you want you want to start going and and blanketing areas, right? The t- the thing that you that they're looking to do is is budget the amount of time that they're going to need to knock on all the doors or and, sit at either of the two Tim Hortons is, is right at length, right? And 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 post at length on social media, but I I think that there's some. There is some benefit to waiting. Sure. Current yeah. Mayor Nelson Santos is it notoriously waits till the end to right. announce. Yeah. But there's, I'll, I'll make the case in that, that he's known. He's well known. I'm just simply talking about people. And I get it. I mean, you, your, your experience in that you've ran, you. And Unsuccessfully. When did you, it so, when did, so what, what was your case? When did you. Yeah. Uh, uh, I did a fairly. Let me th- no. I think that I was probably end of June. Yeah, it was probably end of June. Um, How did that work out for you? Like it, it didn't. <laughs> no, <yeah. laughs> no, and I, I, I'm, I'm, I say that in jest, obviously. Well, but- and and I, I would argue that I had, and and it was, it was a a, a failure. Thank God, um, that uh, I had relied too much on on name recognition. Like I figured people generally would recognize my name on a ballot um, from the radio and I would be first on the list because alphabetically I'm I'm near the top yeah and uh, and that would be enough I I really didn't have that infrastructure behind so I can say that uh, to do it successfully if they're smart they're not worrying about filing their papers now they're worrying on building their door knocking team right now and 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 then once they're ready and they have their and i did have a full marketing plan once you have your full marketing plan your execution you have all of your designs you have your brochures they're printed you have stickers like all the stuff is in hand ready to rock you file your papers and you start then like like you okay. want to splash you yeah. don't want to just have us randomly talking about your name with you not having the ability to manage that it's like waterboarding right <laughs> like waterboarding a candidate yeah you don't like, no and that's you don't want to trickle it yeah you you you, you really just want to take all that water in the face all at once and i guess like ultimately this new splash it's, pad. it's it's everything you do right. in those few weeks leading up to when the ballots yeah. first come out so that's you want to be top of mind on election day it doesn't matter if you're top of mind in august yeah, fair enough. No, it's yeah. No. I, it just surprises me though that there hasn't been a new name that that's actually signed on so far. You would think that you know there would be someone who's pretty overzealous and decides that they're going to get out there and they're going to campaign to make sure that they have brand awareness throughout the entire duration. Right? You, I know you can't com- campaign, campaign, but you know to get overly prepared and have that ability to be able to say, "Hi, I've." I have uh, registered to uh, to be a part of the municipal election. You know what? Uh, a, a great example, and he he did a fantastic job campaigning last year. Is John Line, and uh, mm-hmm. and mm, yeah, and he he filed early. I think he filed oh, the day that he ago. could. Yeah, yeah. and uh, 
And he worked hard. He like, did. And, he did. And he knocked and he he claims, and I, I uh, there's no reason to dispute it, that he was the only candidate that knocked on every single door in all of Kingsville. He knocked on mine. Yeah, I, I, I actually, I'm pretty sure he did knock on mine. If, if he did, maybe I wasn't home, but I'm sure... <laughs> I'm sure he did. I have. There's no reason to think he didn't. Was he leaning on your fence? But and he, yes, that's in his name. Line lean. <laughs> well, I like He's it. lining on I your like fence. It. Um, but yeah, it's 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 one of those things where he he had his name recognition. He was all over social media. He was all over social media every day, yep. posting pictures of himself, and it it didn't amount to votes in the end. And um. He, now the incumbents were um uh obviously have a leg ahead so it's more it's different it's different when you're an incumbent and you're running you you can kind of file whenever you want and just keep on going to council meetings because your name's going to be in the news all the time anyway but there were th- there were three incumbents there were two open seats right right was it three incumbents was it tony thomas and larry larry yeah, yeah and because and- is this is i know it's laura's first term mm-hmm. and kim's first term that's what i thought right okay yeah yeah and and they they ran successful campaigns laura's and, uh, laura was everywhere yeah yeah oh, you know? yeah no mm-hmm. that's and, just it and you know you talk about john's campaign but the, the five that got elected they they did their yeah. work yeah. and yeah. and especially laura and and i i i'll apologize if if she was out like like knocking a, a lot prior to when the signs went out but she probably didn't have to because as as soon as those like her army of signs went out and um and and then she was like, like hitting social media yeah she was she came by i know she came by my door after the signs had gone up um she ran effective late game campaign and that's that's municipally what's going to get you elected if you're and and no no discredit to John he he also ran a great campaign it's it's just one example of it, you need to concentrate your efforts and and that's why I'm not surprised that the numbers haven't changed I think mm-hmm. like I said that we're gonna see a lot of people sign up you know mid like early to mid July and um and then we're gonna start seeing the the parade of social media content hitting everywhere can't wait no. Oh. God, well, I look can. forward to it. Can't wait. No, no. See, this is these are just the the first little primers of the summer, right? You know, well, yeah, well, big summer plans and whatnot. But you know, nothing else has been that much newsworthy lately. We still have some tribunal uh, dates ahead Ooh, for a couple yeah, of things. We right. still got some, you know, dispositions about uh, town events and whatnot, and some town events that are going to happen. You know, Spits are in the OHL uh, championships, yeah, the finals, yeah. game yeah, three a, tonight. Yeah. yeah. First uh, car show at Heritage Village comes up on uh, next uh, Sunday, I believe it is. You know, I know it's not a thing for you guys. I'm a car guy. But anyway, whatever. No, I, I like cars. That's We're cool. all back. Things are happening. Things are opening up. So yeah, we'll see. Jack Minor Bird Sanctuary is there, <laughs> as always. It's never leaving. <laughs> you know, I went there for the first time uh, a week ago. We were, we we're doing some filming. Uh, Excuse, uh, listeners, Kevin just fell immediately ill uh, just now because he openly admitted that he's never been to a never, staple of the Kingsville community I mean, until 2022. You're, you're telling me to get out more. Yeah. You never Okay, been so a- I'm not like. You know, so I don't remember. own a. I don't own a. I wasn't, a, 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 I wasn't here during grade seven empire. field trip time. We went to Lang Pioneer Village. Like we did. Oh, that was fun, Kevin. On Road Three, there's this place called Colasantes. Colahoos. Colahoos. Have you been? (laughs) Have you been? I've heard of it. I was thinking of stopping by one day. Uh, It's nice there. I don't know if you heard of the sanctuary though. It's it's beautiful. A lot of lots of birds, geese. (laughs) Oh, we want to thank all our listeners for spending your hard-earned, lovely, valuable time to spend it for this last hour with us. Uh, remember to like and subscribe. It's been an hour. Yeah, I know, but we we didn't say anything about the provincial election, which is fine. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Doug Ford. There we go. Yeah. That's enough. Okay. And and Tarasa's seat was not repopulated by the NDP. No. So it, it went by the way of the uh, conservatives and also progressive, uh, conser- inter- progressive conservatives. Can I Thank tell you, you an, an interesting factoid I found? So um, it, do you guys remember Frank Cleese? 
Why does that sound for? Is that like Clee's Beach? Gary does. Frank Clee's is, is a former Leamington resident uh, who ran for Essex South in the seventies, and uh, and he uh, was defeated twice by Remo Mancini. Frank Lees is now an advisor to Doug, and then he sorry. Then Frank moved to Aurora. He was he was successfully elected in Aurora. I think he was transportation minister for a while, um, and now he's an advisor to Doug Ford. <laughs> uh, Anthony Liardi, uh, at the new newly elected Essex MPP for the Conservative Party, yeah. is and I I I think I have this right. He's definitely related to, but I think he's the nephew of Remo Mancini. Oh, jeez. It all comes full circle. Incredible. What was what was the other seat? Peeling that, the onion back. What was the other seat in Windsor that was lost? Uh, uh, Windsor, Windsor Tecumseh. Tecumseh. Was that yeah, I went to yeah. Andrew Dowie. Yeah. That was... Is that uh, Hatfields? Um, yes, so, that was Hatfields. Hatfields? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Percy Hatfields. So that was another long running NDP yeah. riding that went blue. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, in general summary, I don't think anyone was surprised about the outcome. Uh, I, the only thing that surprised me, uh, I would say, is I, I thought that some of the fringe um, candidates, some of the, the far right uh, candidates would have drawn more public support. I, I just the way that the numbers fell, I thought that it was it was going to have impacts on the NDP, which I think we did see. I don't think it ended up impacting the conservatives the way that a lot of people thought that it would. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think in some of those uh, swing areas, the liberals were actually able to get a little bit higher um, uh, public support numbers compared to the NDP because some of those um, old union guys from some of those mining towns are are would end up siding with some of the the far right leanings instead of uh, instead of some of the more center leanings of the liberals and and what the conservatives are at the moment. Uh, so I thought that was interesting. Um, the fact that there was an independent M- yeah. MPP elected is kind of yeah. interesting. Um, and and the actual voter turnout <laughs> um, numbers <laughs> are mind boggling. Yeah. Abysmal. So much apathy. Abysmal. Yeah. And you know what? That's on the opposition parties. They didn't yeah. have a, a campaign that, that would rally the troops that would go out and against the conservatives. And if you're the conservatives, why would you rock the boat when when you know you have a base that's going to elect you? Yeah, it didn't, yeah. didn't have to. And which, which right. does surprise me that the liberals and the NDP, especially with having uh, Taras and, and Percy in the two ridings here, being surrounded by other parties for an eternity, weren't able to, to keep that stronghold and march out a good candidate that could, could sway and, and yeah, keep those I mean, writings. Essex has only been NDP with Taras. Like it was it, since 2011, though. Okay, fine, but it was liberal. Yeah, liberal before that. Like it hasn't yeah. been conservative for so long. Right, but still, like you know, it'd be it'd be interesting <clears throat> locally to to look at some of the demographics of how those voters have changed because I think a lot of that liberal stronghold that we had down here was because it was a lot of new immigrants from Portugal, from Italy, from Lebanon. Um, that made up a lot of the populations, and obviously, Crozier, right? Well, even before that, like, like the liberals have, like, if you want want to go back, you can talk about Herb Gray yeah, and Herb Gray. and Remo Mancini is another yeah. one. Like yep. some of the Eugene Whalen and then Susan mm-hmm. later, like some of these. Well, they were MPs, but yeah, Jerry, yeah. Jerry mm-hmm. Pickard. Jerry, Jerry Pickard's another yeah. one. Obviously, Bruce, and and so you can you can look to some of these. Um, uh, you know, formerly heavily um, heavy liberal areas, but you know now a lot of those people have been here for a while, and, or or a generation after their their family ha- came here originally through immigration, and um, and it would be interesting to look at some of the demographics to see if any of that kind of plays mm. into some of the shifting of of moving away from that left leaning liberal vote into the more traditional central ontario vote that is like central ontario is a is a, a long-standing uh uh can uh, quote unquote canadian farm farming area mm-hmm. and um and if some of 
of of that more tr- traditional agricultural vote is starting to make its way down to this area as well. It, it seems to be. It seems to have been happening slowly ever since Jeff Watson's <laughs> election in yeah was that two thousand six so, yeah, two thousand eight so, whatever like that. that is that general yeah. time frame he was he, he was mid aughts I want to say mm-hmm. yeah, oh, oh, six, so. oh four oh six oh eight yeah, yeah really, really that election over Susan <clears throat> Whalen is what started the yeah, launch pad for a, for the conservative movement yeah. in this in it's this area swung it so so we get Anthony Liardi and. Uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, at Leamington, uh, Chatham, Kent, Trevor Jones, Trevor, Trevor Jones. Jones. So that's double blue now. Yeah, yeah. Well, they were blue. They were blue before. But well, they were blue for most of it, and then yeah. Rick, Rick, Rick. Yeah, yeah, but Rick was he got he got ousted, so it wasn't representative from the Ontario party. It was the one good vacated. Th- the the good thing is, it is always whether or not people agree with the politics that was elected. There are benefits to having your MP be a member of government, which is this. So that really quickly, this was the, the uniqueness that I think that Essex County hasn't had to be able to take advantage of for a very long time with the premier and the, the, the local candidate or being of the same, like funding, right. funding now can get funneled our way. Projects can get visibility within the party, right? Yeah, Whereas if you're well, the opposition or if you're the other party that's not represented. No, like, but I mean, well, I mean, Bruce, the liberals ran Ontario when Bruce was MPP. Yeah. Well, and there's a reason why the widening of Highway 3 is called Bruce Crozier Way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So anyway, well, that's fresh. Well, any any guesses on a Fed recurring this year? Oh, it's good. No. Next year. Next year. Oh, no, you think it's going to go for a while? The NDP, there's no reason the NDP would break the coalition. Though I think it'll run its full term. Oh, I. Yeah. Why would you? They don't have the. They don't have the support, and they. Yagmeet Singh, the the way that that the coalition is set up, he can come out with a couple of wins. Yeah. and and you know, and kind move, of. Yeah, move move into move perpetuity along because and, there's not enough opposition. Yeah, I I would be shocked. Yeah. Not, Crazier things have happened, but I, it would take something <laughs> fairly significant to happen in, to the Liberal Party for there to be a shift there. A tornado go through and rip apart that coalition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there, finally, now we're wrapping. So uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us on this episode of That Kingsville Podcast. want to remind you that uh, we all need your support uh, by liking and subscribing either the YouTube videos or the podcast from wherever you get them. I want to thank Gary from Quantum Sound Productions for producing this wonderful publication slash broadcast slash thing on the TV when people can see me from a side view. In the ether. In the ether. Join us again next time when we talk more about all this stuff and then other stuff. Thank you, everyone. See you next time.